Is the Umidity G Power 5 a good phone to buy in 2021? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. What's going on, guys? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Umidity G Power 5 and going over whether or not it's a good phone to buy in 2021. Now, before we go any further, I do want to remind you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot. But that being said, let's get into the video. So this phone has a 6.53 inch LCD display, definitely around the average size for today's standards. And this is not bad at all. It's gonna be great for content consumption. So if you're watching videos, playing a game, even reading, everything is gonna show up decently large on this display. So no complaints there. We got a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 160, and an aspect ratio of 20 by nine. I have the brightness at 100% right now, and despite only being a 720p display with a PPI of 160, it still looks pretty good. Overall, I wouldn't say this display is anything special compared to the average phone because it's pretty much the exact same as so many other phones in this price range. But that being said, it's not bad, so I wouldn't say the display is a negative side to the phone. We got a water drop notch up here for the front facing camera. Not a huge fan of water drop notches, but this is pretty normal again for phones in this price range. And this camera is eight megapixels. For storage, this phone has 128 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. And this is one point where this phone really impresses me. In this price range, storage varies a lot. You have phones with storage as small as 32 gigabytes. And then you have phones like this that have 128. It's really all over over the place, but this is definitely at the top in this price range. So if you are a power user, if you're gonna have lots of apps and app data and lots of photos and videos and don't really particularly wanna use a micro SD card, then this phone is definitely gonna be a great option because of all this internal storage. Now this phone does not have wireless charging, no real surprise there, but security options are pretty good. We got a fingerprint scanner right here on the power key as well as face unlock. So let's give this fingerprint scanner a try. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So as you can see, it's real fast and responsive. My only real complaint here, I don't really know if this counts towards the fingerprint scanner or just the design of the buttons themselves, but compared to lots of other phones, especially ones with fingerprint scanners on the power key, this one just feels a little flimsy and cheap overall. And that's really not the best feeling. But other than that, it really does work perfectly fine. So I guess it's not that big a deal. Now taking a look at the rear camera setup, we got a 16 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide camera, and a five megapixel macro camera. So this was a photo taken with the main camera of the phone. And as you can see, it does look really nice. It's not the best. So if you are using your phone for more professional purposes, like say you're a real estate agent and you need to get pictures of a property or something like that, then you might wanna choose a different device with a higher end camera, but for more casual use, like social media or maybe sending pictures to friends and family, something like that, this camera is gonna be perfectly fine. I don't really see anything wrong with the image per se, but I have seen a lot better. This photo was taken with portrait mode. I'm honestly not quite sure why this phone even has portrait mode because there's no depth sensing camera so as you can see here the background isn't even blurred in the slightest it's really just slightly zoomed in I don't even know why they have this mode on this phone it doesn't work at all so if you're trying to take photos in portrait mode I would not recommend this device because you will most likely be disappointed this is a photo taken with a macro camera this is actually pretty impressive I would say it captures all those little details really well for video, this phone can shoot in 1080p in both the rear and the front cameras. Pretty standard, no complaints there. Although I would say if you do wanna shoot a lot of videos with your phone and you're gonna be keeping them for something, whether it's social media or something more professional like YouTube, I wouldn't really recommend using this phone because just like the camera features, they're okay. But for something you're more serious about, I would say this phone misses the mark a little. Internally, this device is getting four gigabytes of RAM with the MediaTek Helio G25 processor. I ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on the phone and it came back with a single core score of 145 and a multi-core score of 857. So again, like so many features with this phone, it's really nothing out of the ordinary. I wouldn't say it's significantly worse than any other phone in the price range, but also I wouldn't say it's any better either. So when you're choosing between this phone
phone and another one like it in the same price range, I wouldn't choose it because of the processing power. Because power and speed wise, I feel like most phones in this price range are gonna be about the same. They're gonna be fine for daily activities like sending text messages, making calls, browsing the web, and some light social media use. But when you're getting into more heavy mobile gaming or video editing or pretty much anything that takes a little bit more RAM, even if you're on Instagram, I noticed specifically Instagram has certain functions where it gets a little laggy with phones around this level. So if you're planning on doing more of those activities, I would say you might be better off with another device. But if you're only using it for basic activities, this phone should be fine. What I do recommend though is running a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on your current device and comparing it to this to see if it's an upgrade because it may or may not be. Now, while this phone is pretty average in some aspects and below average in others, it's actually quite a bit above average when it comes to battery. This phone has a 6,150 milliamp hour battery that supports 10 watt fast charging. So that is definitely a larger battery than usual, especially in this price range. I've seen plenty of phones in this price range that only have a 3,500, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Sure, a decent number of them have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries, but very few of them have all over that. And that's one thing about Humidigy that does consistently impress me. They typically do tend to put larger batteries in their phones. And the fast charging helps a lot too, because if you're ever in a situation where your phone is dying, you won't have to wait as long to charge it up a little. Another couple features about this phone that are pretty cool are first of all, the thermometer. Now I'm not really sure how many people are gonna really find a lot of use out of this feature. And I honestly don't even know how accurate it is, but it is still a pretty cool, unique feature in this phone that makes it a little bit more memorable. The other thing I like about this phone that's actually really useful is the smart key. I feel like more phones, especially more mid-range and lower end phones should have this because with a smart key, you can reprogram it to do pretty much anything you want and it gets really useful when it comes to shortcuts. As you can see right here in our settings menu, there's a whole section dedicated to the smart key and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So that is one feature I really like about this phone. Lots of Humidity phones have it and surprisingly very few other phones in any price range for that matter have the same feature. Now, unfortunately, despite having a few interesting features, this phone doesn't have NFC. So if you want to use contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay, you're going to want to look for a different device because you won't be able to do that with this phone. So in conclusion, is the Humidity Power 5 a good phone to buy in 2021? Despite a few shortcomings, I would say it's still a solid option. Although a lot of features like the display and the processor are pretty much just average, that's technically a good thing because it means they're not below average. The only thing about this phone I'm not a huge fan of is just the camera setup. I think they could have done a lot better. And there are plenty of phones in this price range that have much better cameras than this one. Other than that, the display again is pretty much just like every other entry level phone. No better, no worse. The processor, same situation. And the features, mostly the same, but the smart key does give it an advantage, I think, over a lot of others. It also has a really large battery, which I really like about the phone. And to top it all off, it has a ton of storage too. So if you're looking for an entry-level smartphone for more basic activities, but need more storage than usual for apps, photos and videos, and other pieces of data, and would prefer a phone with a larger battery, then the Humidity Power 5 is gonna be a great option. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next video.